Transport Board operations partly blamed for this island's numerous credit downgrades. That's our top story in our Barbados Today Morning News update for Thursday, November the 16th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. The head of one of the island's private sector transport entities is blaming the operations of the state-run Transport Board for contributing to the spate of credit downgrades experienced by Barbados. President of the Association of Private Transport Operators, Morris Lee, says not only is the board a financial letdown, but it's facing obsolescence. When you look at the cost of keeping the transport board as an entity, the transport board is one of the players within the Barbados economy that is responsible for all these downgrades that the country has received because it costs the that spares of Barbados over a billion dollars over the last 15 or four years to keep the transport board going. And the question that we will must ask is, has the country received value for money? Meanwhile, Lee is strongly supporting the proposed changes to the Road Traffic Amendment Act as part of amendments which were debated in Parliament Tuesday. Public service vehicle operators are to be subjected to random drug and alcohol testing amid a wider legislative crackdown on reckless behavior on Barbados' streets. It has money support if you're doing testing, whether it be alcohol testing, urine mm -hmm. testing, blood testing. It has money support because um, you have seen the amount of fatalities that have taken place on the road and essentially any attempt to curb that will have our support. I find though that there must be care and wisdom taken in terms of how the law is administered. While suggesting that it was the minority of drivers who were guilty of drinking and driving, President of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Roy Raphael, told Barbados today that his members would be complying with the changes once they become law. When you look at the PSC operators out there, there are more good PSC operators than bad. There are a few bad elements within the system, and um, we believe that we need to work closely with the Ministry of Transport to work them out. These um, operators are creating issues for us. Some of them are related drivers who could have been identified by the Minister of being on the influence or going to the shop and buying um, beers and so on. We have had situations where uh, we, we saw for ourselves that conductors would have played as if they were, were um, a, a police officers by stopping uh, vehicles and so I, those practices we were not um, we were not um, allowed. In other news now, residents of St. John say they are not surprised by the announcement made by their parliamentary representative Mara Thompson that she will not be contesting the next general election. The incumbent Democratic Labour Party MP made the revelation as she was making her way to the House of Assembly on Tuesday. But while expressing regrets that the wife of the late Prime Minister David Thompson had chosen to exit the political ring, some DLP loyalists yesterday maintained that the St. John seat would continue to be a safe one for the ruling party. The island's largest public sector trade union is holding out the possibility of taking the Front Del Stewart administration to court over the time it is taking to relocate immigration officers from the environmentally unfriendly Wharf Road headquarters. Following a closed-door meeting with Immigration Department shop stores last night, General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Rosalind Smith, told Barbados today, while a class action against the government was a likelihood, she now has to meet with the wider membership to determine the next step. We have persons who are out for a year, persons on medication for life, so therefore we have to be thinking how best we're going to go about representing the workers. Probably might be your class action against the government for the, you say, oh, 75% of workers are ill from that middle. So it's a very serious matter. There's regional and international news after this short break. Indulge your every craving at this year's Barbados Food and Rum Festival, November 16th to 19th. Thursday, the festival kicks off at Oyston's. Friday, the Barbados Concord Experience, eight chefs, six mixologists, and the Energetic Spice and Company. 
Saturday, Taste the Spirits of Polo featuring Chef Jason Howard. This would not be Barbados without a beach party. Sunday, enjoy an impressive lineup of Barbadian entertainers at the Hilton for Feet in the Sand. And the weekend would not be complete without the Gourmet Safari Dinner Series at the Cliff, the Crane and the Tides. Remember, November 16 to 19. Get your tickets at TicketPal box offices today. Welcome back with news from the region now. Guyana's acting crime chief Paul Williams says abuse of suspects in custody at the criminal investigations department is impossible. His bold assertion comes amidst persistent claims by suspects of abuse and even torture at the hands of police while in their custody. Javon Vickery has more. In recent times, persons accused of murder robbery and even those held with guns and ammunition have accused the police of torture and abuse whenever they appear before magistrates. City magistrates have also ordered investigations into those claims which are often thrown out. Responding to a question from Nightly News, Acting Crime Chief Paul Williams stated that the abuse of any suspect while in custody at the Criminal Investigations Department is impossible and here is why. The public needs to know half of our training with the Justice Education Society, even with the magistrates and the judges, we are now conducting our interviews under cameras. So even the taking of caution statements, they are being taken under cameras. So at the end of it, if people want to deny the credibility and also the weight and the authenticity of those confessions, the camera is there to show. And on the global front now, the death toll in flash floods in Greece has risen to at least 15, with scores more people homeless after a night of heavy rains. The details in this Euronews report. In some areas near Athens, the floodwaters rose to the first story of small buildings and left a trail of devastation in their wake. Local residents say the damage is unprecedented. This woman says she's lost everything. We're devastated. All our furniture is destroyed. We struggle to create a living. What can I tell you? We can't even go into sleep. Neighbours will put us up tonight, honestly. The neighbours lend us the clothes I'm wearing. My daughter was inside. I couldn't hear her and I was yelling, my daughter, my daughter. She climbed onto a table and had to swim to get out of the house. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.